Hello everybody, it's Peter. Peter with an I, S T A W A R T. Welcome to segment 49 of... I don't know, the Dark Tower, I guess? Instead of toilet paper rolls, microscopes were mounted in front of the eyes. These were for hardcore science students. Nancy and Joe once fooled Frank by having him wear a pair of ordinary glasses and have him look at paper cups and cardboard boxes they had cut big holes in. He honestly believed they were x-ray glasses. Frank was astonished that he had the ability to look through ceramic coffee cups, which were actually made of glass to see the white milk inside. <laughs> and he stood at the door for quite some time, marveling at the glory that he could see right through it. He finally caught on that he didn't need special glasses to see through the sliding glass door. It would have been clever to have him use those glasses to look through a nudie magazine. Polly had been working half the night to get the goggles ready for that morning's lecture on the world of microscopy. The dentist came in with a new hat, which arrived that morning from the tailors. It was a smaller version of his crown. It was supposed to be an eye tooth, but really looked more like a pope's mitre. After sorting through some papers and recovering his pen and transparent sheets for the overhead projector, he started the lesson. This is our world, said the dentist, giving it a little spin. Actually, it was just a globe. Nancy and Joe made Frank run and hide under his bed and cry for a half hour when they told him that when he put his fingers directly onto the globe, he crushed and killed millions of innocent people. Frank felt terrible for crushing and killing just one person. He became wise to the fact that the globe was just a representation of the world, but he always took care only to touch the blue spots. If you were looking at the Earth from space, it would appear that nothing was going on there. You couldn't see buildings, cars, or people. The green patches would provide evidence that there was vegetation, and yet, from such a vantage point, it would be impossible to see individual trees and bushes. When you walk around this classroom, when you ride the bus, or cook things in your kitchen, you may see evidence of microbial life, but it's impossible to see the individual beasties. These beasties are everywhere. In fact, this globe that I hold in my hand is covered with microscopic organisms. Frank leaned forward with concern. As the dentist spoke, his fingertips were pressing on the continents. Frank thought about all the little microbes that were screaming, You're, You're squeezing, squeezing me! Frank shifted uncomfortably when he considered all the microbes that were crawling around in his pants. Since the invention of the electron microscope in the 1920s, We've been able to see these tiny creatures that are just a few nanometers big, continued the dentist. The introduction of the electron microscope was marred with obscurity in the 1970s, when a few researchers noticed that there was something fishy about the black and white pictures produced by electron microscopes. The shadows didn't match up right. There are a few very convincing conspiracy theories that suggest that there's no such thing as the electron microscope, that the pictures are fake, and that the images they claim are of bacteria are really black and white photographs of white rice. And the first picture of the germ is really the curse of Elf from Laverne's sweater. Open up your textbooks to page 247, requested the dentist. There's an actual picture of a human chromosome. Frank studied the picture. Say, he said, looking closely at one of the ends of the chromosomes, 
which looked suspiciously like stuffed socks that had been tied together. Isn't that the Nike symbol? Yeah. Everyone took a closer look. Hey, Polly, why don't you get out your special headset, said Frank. Polly jolted with excitement when it clicked in his mind what Frank was talking about, and he brought out his contraption. The dentist took interest and approached. What do you have there? He asked, accepting the headset for inspection. They're microscope goggles, he said, shifting with eagerness that the dentist was looking at his contraption. The dentist had a stern look on his face, unready to convey any sign that he was impressed. But everyone knew that if the dentist halted the lecture and was taking time to check Polly's workout, it must mean he thought it was significant. Hold this, he told Frank, handing over his miter. When Frank lifted his arms, the dentist caught a whiff of something funny and assumed it was B.O. If he had realized it was traces of embalming fluid that had clung to him from the night before, Frank might have found himself in the cover slip of quite an investigation. The dentist took the gadget, which looked like something out of a Mad Max movie, and put it on. Polly and the rest of the class knew the dentist was impressed when his mouth fell open with surprise. The dentist looked around and saw the unseen world. On the desk in front of him, there was an amoeba, which was magnified to the size of a dinner plate. A dust mite jumped into Janet's hair, but it was so small, she didn't even know it. The dentist watched as it crawled onto a pore on her scalp which was gaping open like the eighth hole of a golf course. The dentist recoiled when he saw one of her zits, which looked like an angry Mount Vesuvius. What? What is it? she asked. The dentist watched as another student took a sip of coffee from her cup, which was crawling with a germ that looked like a giant Southeast Asian centipede. She screamed and threw the cup away from her face onto the floor because the giant centipede wasn't microscopic. It had escaped from the zoology lab and was taking a bath in her mocha. As people jumped out of their seats and a few heroes stomped it out, crushing the hard-to-obtain centipede with the $1,000 price tag, the dentist saw something wonderful. Terence was farting. The fart molecule silently spewed out of his ass like a flurry of butterflies. And when they rotated in the air, the dentist could see the red, white, black, purple, and yellow spheres connected by little sticks. They formed little structures, and when they worked their way up people's noses, they would get a weird expression on their face as they looked around. Terence didn't say a word. He just fish-eyed to see if people around him had noticed. <whistles> the dentist saw a fart molecule coming toward him. It sort of danced back and forth as it shifted position. The dentist was tempted to run, but he held on to the handrail to test the unknown, to smell what he had actually seen. It was as if he was making himself lay still while a swarm of ants came toward his naked body. The molecule disappeared under his nose. The dentist breathed it in with anticipation. He could smell it! It was glorious! His triumph and elation quickly curdled into a wince of disgust. Did you poop your pants? asked the dentist. Everyone backed away from Terence. What'd you eat? asked Frank, covering his nose.